Okay, welcome everybody to our October meeting. Catherine Meyer, co-chair. Uh, we'll do introductions, Paul. Wait, can you hear us, Paul? Uh-oh, critical, critical part to lose him. Uh, Adam, how about you? I'm hearing you, are you hearing me? You're frozen for a little bit there. We can hear you again, though. I'll just I'll just go. Uh, Adam Sauce here, uh, just committee member, Wethersfield president. I guess I'll take another stab at it if you could hear me. Paul Brady, yes. co chair. John B. Yeah, John Beretta, treasurer. Cindy. Cindy Jacobs, town resident. John K. Uh, John K, director of uh, special services for Weathersfield Schools. And Jaleen. Uh, Jaleen Patino, uh, staff liaison. Okay, welcome. I think, uh, do, do we have any minutes from our last meeting? I was not here. Did anybody do minutes? Like my co-chair is silent and missing. So I don't know about the Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I was trying to get a headphone so I could hear you better. Um, so Do we have I, minutes to approve or no? I jotted down some notes. I just didn't put them into a actual format or anything. I don't know if anyone else um, took notes as well. I jotted down some stuff, but it's not formatted either. If you both send yours to me, I can put them together and we can approve it for the next meeting. Sound good? All right. Sounds good. Okay. That's me. I'm either not here or I'm just here and bossing everybody around. So there's one extreme or the other. Um, okay. So I thought it'd be opportune to just do a quick little reminder. Wait, can I share a screen? Oh, yeah, here I am. Oh, you disabled it. Julian, can I share it? That I'm not too sure how to do. I'm sorry. Um, how about this? I'm gonna wait. Where does he go? He's supposed to go to. Mm, I forget how you let somebody else do it. Participants. No. You have to make me a co-host. I've had some difficulty with that in the past. <laughs> All right, that's okay. I'm gonna send you the mission statement, and then you're gonna pull it up. How about that? Yeah, that's okay. Yes, but you might have to direct me on um, how to pull it up. I apologize. I'm a little Zoom illiterate. It's okay, we're all skill building together in the virtual world. Okay, I just forwarded you the email that has member contact mission statement in the group home list so if you can open the mission statement when you have a chance and what do i click to share my screen so go to the bottom of the zoom screen and the green share screen oh. with the arrow all right that's that's okay. And then just click on the right window and it'll go right to it. Click on the window you want to open. It's okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's not working. Oh wait, I can do it now for some reason. Okay. So well, I'm gonna do it. So whatever you did enabled me to do it, and that's good. All right. Okay. All set. Great. There you go. Okay. So mission 
to assist and give a voice to town residents with disabilities by providing a forum to discuss issues and opportunities. Um, we provide guidance and resources for community involvement, job access, education, and with the intent that the town remains a welcoming and inclusive committee for all residents. So Paul and I were kind of talking about this and if you break it down, there's, there's kind of like the support and the um, fundraising and trying to, you know, the, the, um, the grants that we provide, there's that kind of arm of our mission. Um, and there's also an advocacy arm. And that's kind of always where my mind goes because of, of my, what I do. So, you know, that's both of those things. It's, um, it's bolstering up support, it's assisting, um, it's helping to develop different kinds of resources, um, partnering with Therapeutic Rec about, you know, opportunities and events, making sure we're connected to different communities of, of folks with disabilities. And so people are not as isolated as, um, yeah, when isolated. And so I kind of see that all under our mission statement. Um, the, you know, the resource booklet that we've been working on, that's part of the assistance, that's part of the guidance and resources. Um, and then this idea of developing social media to help kind of publicize opportunities and access, I think is really important. So I just wanted to kind of draw upon going back to what our purpose is and what we're trying to accomplish. Any questions or comments on that? Sounds really good to me. Good, because I don't know if we can change it. So I'm not sure it's up for debate. Yeah. <laughs> but, <is it? laughs> but it's just it's it's helpful to again draw back down to the point. The intent of this exercise though is to find um, places where we want to make edits. Is that right? To update it? I don't, I don't know how we officially do that. I mean, I'm just oh. sharing it. I know we had talked about that at one point. I was just sharing it to kind of center ourselves back. Oh, maybe yeah. I'm uh, misunderstanding what you're putting up here. So I thought at one point there was a uh, mention of a booklet and that, that we were going to go through a booklet and decide, you know, what pieces of that and what language is re relevant and updated and what needed to be changed. That's yeah, that's something, we're yeah. just really, this is a standalone document right here. Yeah, this is just the oh, mission okay. statement. We're just, I thought, you know, this is page one of. Huh. No, okay, no, 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 this is the mission statement. Okay, very good. I don't know who, somebody created it, but just to kind of, what you know, what is our charge in this committee? Okay, so, um, Going back to kind of the, the highlights of what we are trying to focus in on. I mean, I think it's hard because I think we all have really good ideas and I think it's, uh, we don't have a large pool to, to draw upon to execute certain things. Um, so Jaleen, that booklet that you just held up, that's, that's the older one that we only have in PDF that so we realized we could not um, edit it the way it was, right, Adam? Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's from 2009, and it was a PDF that was just a scan of like a physical document. But That's I had saved it, I, I, I exported it from PDF to Word, so we, we do have a version that we can edit now. So I guess, you know, if we want to make that useful, we should start with the people who know the resources the best in town. So I would guess that, you know, that'd be Jaleem if you're helping to disseminate or share that booklet or John or um, or Natalie or anybody else or, or um, Chris Taylor who might use that booklet. You guys might know offhand just flipping through it. These five places don't exist anymore, you know. Yeah, I had sent an email to Jaleem and Natalie about basically just saying that, but before before the committee members go in and just do like formatting edits, it makes more sense to, you know, because we could we could spend a lot of time editing things and then it gets right. to the people who actually know what's going on and they'd be all removed anyway. So yeah. Um I spoke to Natalie earlier today and um she made a good point too. Just going through the booklet after I looked through it as well, like the first seven pages I would say that they might need to be edited. 
but as far as the other stuff inside the booklet, it's a lot of just um, just updating the contacts and making sure that the companies are still running. Um, so we also thought about maybe just dividing dividing it up between all of the committee members. Um, if we do eight of us, it would be about eight pages a piece. Um, and I think that could help move things along and um, yeah. Um, maybe, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but if um, I'm assigned to papers or there or the pages where there is a reference to sort of internal workings of the town or the school system or uh, transportation, I, I may not be the best person. I mean, it, person to edit that. I'm wondering if, if you guys, <clears throat> you and Natalie want to propose edits and we can take a look at that as a committee because um, you seem to be pretty well directed in terms of what you think should be edited and updated. Yeah, um, it's just pretty much um, context. It's why we thought about maybe dividing it up amongst um, eight of us because um, it's just pretty much the name of the company, the address and um, the telephone number and the website. Um, just okay. teamwork and make the dream work. I'm so sorry. maybe, I, 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 go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll yield to you when you. Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess I, I haven't seen it, so I don't exactly know what you're talking. You know, I, I guess I was thinking of maybe processes and procedures and things like that, kind of. A no, I think it's it's just like like he said. I think it's it's divided into different categories of places to contact if you need X Y Z. Right, Jaleem, are there different? Yeah, it's, like, it's both, okay. for okay. example, I got you. so for example, okay. this section, section B is housing, and it just goes through different housing um, contacts and stuff like that. Okay. So all those main sections are still like applicable. There's no like big main sections that, you know, that shouldn't be in there anymore. I think that's what we would have to have some of the veterans, I would say, go through or so, uh, sign uh, pages. So Adam, can you hear me? Yeah. So um, maybe in order to not, um, I guess, duplicate efforts here, maybe we could put this in kind of a Google Doc or something like that. If you could do put it like in a Google Doc and like we could like go in and just uh, work on it. So every. Yeah, I, I could take the Word document and just uh, just turn it into. It should turn well enough into a Google Doc, so at least yeah. all the content is in there. We can yeah, we can all collaborate on the same document. Yeah, so that in that way, phase one document, we just go in and work on it, and when it's done, it's just done. We don't have to be, you know, tr um, transferring pages from different emails or anything like that. So it'd be a neat, uh, I think, a cleaner cleaner thing um, and we could kind of go back we could when it's done just look over it uh, final time before uh, we you know print it out again or distribute it yeah like Google Docs might mess with the, the formatting a little bit when you go like back and forth but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too bad and I'll, when it's you know when it's all done I'll make sure it's actually like an accessible word document with headings and stuff like that that's that's the end goal to have like a document with all the correct information that's also accessible for screen readers and stuff. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's awesome. Like I'll I'll put it in his Google Doc and I'll send the link out to um I'll either just send it to Jolene, he could send it to everyone, or I'll just send it to everyone in, in an email. Yeah, just send um actually if you want to just send it to me and I will I'm gonna send one email out together with the minutes to look at and then I can Use the, uh, put the link into there. That way, everybody has it into one email. Is that good? Yeah, I'll just make it so every, everyone with the link can edit it. Yeah, um, perfect. And then, I, and then we have to just figure out who, how to sort of split the pages up. Um, well, I'm going to ask again. Is there no intern anywhere? I guess uh, not I anymore. Mean, we talked about that last last meeting. I guess they okay, they're so, there during I mean, the summer, but not anymore. This yeah. is the most prime intern project I've ever heard. In my life. <laughs> uh, I, I have a Yale Law intern, but she's 
she's smarter than me, so I, I don't want to insult her with this, but, <laughs> but you know, we can see if we can find some, some person power. Um, Like the eight, eight pages. Sorry, go ahead. Do do the um, does the high school have community service? Yeah. Projects for uh, graduation. Yep, there's community service projects, and for some things we do have our interact club too, which um, you know just gets involved in social um, areas. Um, Is there any way they can help on this? I could put an email out. I'm trying to think for the Interact Club. Um, I could put an email out for the advisor for that. For the, I'll have to think of who to send it to um, for community service. I guess I could send it to the uh, counseling department and just see if they know some people to do that. Just a suggestion. Yep. Yeah, I don't want to muddy it up too much, but you could, um, I could put it out. There's a couple not the general town page because that's the uh, uh, assess pool but just some of the other pages that are a little more um welcoming that might you know might have teenage kids so we can just get a handful of of high school kids i bet they could knock this out pretty easily all in yes. people right now john i'll let you do it first and then if you're not fruitful then i'll <laughs> okay we wouldn't want to share it too widely, though, just because the anyone right. with a link could edit it, so we could, you know, we could get some, right. some funny, some funny characters going in there. That's always a thing to think about. There's a couple like civic town groups I was thinking of, but yes, agreed. I, I guess I'm being a little bit of a, um, I, I guess I'm, I'm not necessarily agreeing with the strategy because we're on the committee and it's just it's work to be done, and and if each person takes eight pages. I mean, how much is that versus trying to find the right people? And we don't, we haven't met these people. Uh, any thoughts on that? I can see it. I can see it from both ways. Cause like, and that way, you know, we've actually done the editing rather than, well, what did they mean when they edited? And then you're, I don't know who edited. And then we're dealing with another group that we pulled in. I don't know what their understanding of this committee is and its purpose and the language is used and all that. So I guess it kind of makes sense that we all just work on the document and just, just knock it out, get it done. I, I guess, it, I, well, I, I, I get your point, Cindy. Um, and I could also see from the point where it would, um, help to get uh, the uh, whoever it is, if it's a high school kid or uh, someone else in the community engaged in what we're doing and um, possible that could lead to them having more interest in what's going on with the committee. Um, so I could see from that point of view also. And um, I think Joe Limp mentioned that what was in there or what we were editing were more so like contact information. So um, like, you know, updating phone numbers and whether or not these companies were still operational or whatever, I would be a little bit more iffy if it was more uh, policy, policy yeah. stuff. Um, uh, yeah. So for phone numbers, I mean, somebody could easily go back behind and change that. So it's not like policy information that's going to be, you know, would have a huge backlash or something like that. Cindy, also, if you, I mean, I, I think we're open. We, I just know my capacity and I know Paul and I were going to volunteer to run the social media and that's going to be time consuming. So if you want to run point on this, Oh, and do the whole thing. I mean, not necessarily do the whole thing, but you can you can kind of divide it up and and organize logistics. Um, I mean, I'm willing to take uh, you know an assignment, but I, I I'm not sure that I'm willing to take on all you know organizing it. I mean, that's yeah. I'm 
If it if it truly is that, then and then and people are leaning toward just calling that number. Or if it's not a non-operating a number, you take it off. If it really is just a kind of a cut and paste thing, um, we could try it that way. I, if I'm creating a document anyway, so I could help with that section of like just if it, assigning pages to people. The the thing that I can think of the most that would help with like we were saying before with Natalie and and Jelly and looking at it first would be like if, if there are numbers that don't work, the companies aren't running anymore, is there a replacement for those companies now that, that they might know about? Because otherwise it's just removing a company that doesn't exist anymore. And then that's just you know taking a taking a potential service away from the document. That's that's you know, that's the biggest thing I can think of that would like someone who's already experienced in this, who knows a lot more about the town. But that's, I guess that's something that could happen after too. Jolene yeah. and Natalie could review it after, after we take away the companies that don't, that don't work anymore. Yeah, there's gonna have, to, I mean, I'm guessing there's gonna have to be some reaching out to 211 and some, I mean, John Kay's office too. And, you know, it's gonna have to be a little bit more of, I mean, I know, same yeah. thing with my clients is we know who to call for what town for which resource and right. it's very specific and it changes a lot and there are some new resources opening up because of some federal funding so that's a positive thing um and there's probably some things that have changed for sure so yeah. it's a very um you know it's it's it has to be current yeah i, I think last time i checked there i think 77 pages total that's including obviously like the cover page and like maybe a table of contents and stuff. Mm. Um, well, again, I don't exactly know what I'm looking at, so maybe it would be a good idea to have some help. <laughs> I don't mean to be backtracking, but start with we don't want to lose control over it. And if it's really just yeah. updating, you know, resources. Um, yeah, I hear what you're saying though. We we want to make sure we keep a, a oversight of it and. Adam seems to understand things that we don't understand. So we're going to let him be in charge of that. And when it's a Google Doc, we'll be able to see yeah. like what, what pages have been edited. We'll keep, you know, we'll keep the track changes on. So we'll be able to see like, oh, this, this page still needs work. So pretty much anyone could just jump in and, and start on that page. It's all like, you know, it's all real time that it's taking place. So well, I'll hold off just to make make sure I'm clear. I'll hold off sending uh, the information to the guidance counselors for recommendations, but share it with me also. And I know even uh, Roseanne's Rolodex is pretty excellent today. And I hate to say Rolodex, but that's what she goes by. It's amazing. So we'll see whatever, how we can help out too. Whatever works. So let me be clear. Is, are, Adam, are you kind of taking this uh, project for now? Is that it? Sure. And then as we maybe see how we may be able to use interns. Is that where we are? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll at least be creating a document so that we have an active editing link that we could all look at, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll start on a few pages. Um, okay. And, and Catherine said she'll send out the link to at least the committee members, so everybody has it and they could look at it. You know, it, it'd be a good idea for you to at least like look at it and just see what the document looks like, and then if you know, you could if you come across a few pages. When you have the time, um, it, it probably doesn't even need to be a sort of like sectioned out. Like you have this, you have these pages, you have these pages. Unless it would work better that way, we we could also just say each committee member has, you know, six six pages or whatever would work out to the total number of pages. You could probably tell I'm not very good at organizing. So let's just people. let's see what it looks like on a link. Yeah. I think it's hard for us to understand the abstract and we'll, we'll go from there. I'm guessing we are going to utilize your contacts, John. And, um, but I'm sure we'll all have a hand in it too. And if you want me to ask for high school students, just let me know, but I think, and that's what I just want to clarify. I think I'm hearing hold off because we don't know what, you know, we want to have some the structure yeah, structure to it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll finalize that with you. I'm going to put that in the minutes, then that'll be okay. official. Okay. So basically, we're going to all look at it. We're kind of hold off on assignments per se until, say, the next meeting. Is that kind of what we're looking at? 
when is the next meeting is it do we have one next month or is it um no the next um two things are the holiday events the next actual zoom meeting is january 3rd oh right yeah so it would be a lot of emailing back and forth yeah, so just pay attention to your email because I think by the time we look at it and we can see how easy it is to divvy up whether we want to, I mean, we see that there's a few people who are willing to volunteer um, and we'll just, we have to look at it to get a sense, I think. We can even just be sending messages back and forth and, you know, in the document using Google Docs. We could do that. The communication can be. Streamlined. Exactly. Streamlined in one place. It's almost like we'd be speaking in person. A little bit of a delay. But. So exciting. <laughs> okay. One, one suggestion, we should do something, anything we work on somehow, highlight it, change color so everyone knows this section is completed. Yeah, if, if anything, probably just leave a note like next to each, on each page or something. Changing colors of, of text is going to become a... <laughs> It'll become a cluster jam. Oh, well, that's a polite way to say it. <laughs> um, I learned that a long time ago. That's okay. Yeah, that's professional. Um, so, okay. I think that puts that to bed. And if we're not meeting in person slash virtually until January, we definitely want to have this going between now and then. So look out for your assignment. Um, and, or we'll see how much, how much student support we can get. We'll see what makes sense. We'll see who wants to do the, the piece of it. Some people might not feel comfortable, whatever, uh, but we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, and Adam is running point on that. So what I just mentioned before was that we all agree that we need a social media presence. So I think Paul and I are just going to create a Facebook page, just post it places, right, Paul? And it's perfect timing because we're trying to drum up some business for uh, the holiday events. Jaleem, yeah? Sounds good. Yep. So Paul and I are gonna get together in the next week or two, get that going. Week or two, that sounds kind of far, but. Um... Week or two, two weeks, this week? Oh my gosh. Okay. The week, the week just started. You mean you mean in the next over the next week, right? Okay. Counting this Paul one. and Catherine <laughs> get together to make. And then I mean that's something we can share far and wide. So, you know, I'm in the I'm in the mom's call. We could share that. We could share it to all the septas and septos and PTAs and PTOs and all the places. Um that'll be our big debut. It'll be great. I just can't create oh, a Facebook page right now because I think it's still down. What's that? All of all of Facebook is down. down. Yeah, pretty much all day now, I think. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I just found that out a couple of minutes ago. Well, a couple of minutes after I got off the phone with you, Catherine. <laughs> oh, wow. I've been so productive today. Didn't even notice. OK. Um, well, sure, we will do that. Time. We'll do that once they get that little operation up and running again. Um, and just to reiterate, like the, the purpose of social media is to number one, highlight who we are and what we're doing, try to solicit people to or encourage people to come to meetings to give public comment, um, to you know, share information about any kind of resources we have, any kind of events we know about, uh, obviously publicize our um, grant grants that we provide. What else? You guys tell me what else so I can write this down. Maybe donate. Maybe we could do that too. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Um, do you have a specific example? Uh, people donate whatever they can for resources. I don't know. Um, Jalim, will you got, I mean, is that something that, I don't know, Natalie's not here, so I can't get her viewpoint on that. We allowed um, to do that? Yeah, that's, that's my, that would be a good. 
that's really <laughs> why I'm putting that out there to find out if that's something that we're allowed to do, or maybe we could research that a little bit more. You know, I, I think the only way we can get, yeah, I'm not 100% right, but I think the only way we can get money is through the town on their budget or through um, various fundraising functions like uh, pancakes, pancake breakfast or something like that there. So I don't know if we can go out directly for can, um, contributions or not or whatever. I mean, as far as Help wise, maybe we can do it by help wise, but I would oh, think you're go ahead. No, I, I was saying, John, um, when I say donate, I kind of left it broad. Um, not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily really have to be cash, but like, like for the, um, like for the holiday or anything like that, if someone, let's say, wanted to donate like baked goods or something to kind of help with uh, the party, if that was something that was permissible i think from from all the years that i've been involved in this i know the thanksgiving dinner they have now whether the town's going to let it happen or not is another thing but um that's pretty well taken care of out of uh jolene's budget i mean he'll ask us for some money and we'll give him some money as far as the uh christmas event i guess yeah people would probably I think people did bake stuff and things of that nature for that. Well, also, Natalie bought some stuff and cooked it in the kitchen, like hors d'oeuvres and stuff like that there. So the Christmas thing, we might need some help there. Um, the um, I don't know if it's a good time to bring it up or not, but talking about volunteers and stuff like that. Um, I talked to Natalie I've been doing it for 20 years now. She has a, a pancake breakfast. It's the first Saturday of December. She gets a Santa Claus and the whole bit. Um, in the past, I think she's collected uh, $2,000, $3,000. I talked to her and basically the, we're gonna have to get the committee to help maybe getting a portion of that money going to us for some uh, fundraising. So just keep that in mind and it's all on the burner. Well, basically we gotta figure out if the town's gonna let us do it or the town's gonna let things like that happen this year. So um, it just, I'm just warning everybody that if that does happen, we are definitely gonna need help from people on the committee, so. Um, to, staff, to staff the event. Cook pancakes, collect money, yep. clean tables. I mean, we'll, we'll get high school kids and stuff like that to do it too. But um, as yeah. far as kitchen stuff and collecting the money, I know the people that did do it before basically worked for the Parks and Rec Department, but they're really not there anymore. So, um, and in order for us to get a share of the money, I would think we'd have to go in volunteer some help too so um that's very a, yeah so uh just you know what probably there'll be an email going out i don't know if it's possible maybe we should have another meeting before i don't know maybe in, i don't know if you want to do it in november or not but halfway through november or something just so we can get a handle on all this stuff might be a good idea i don't know it's up to you so I guess we should probably um, put in the minutes for a special meeting. This, um, so I guess we'll when we that would probably be after we get the email from either John or Jolyn that this was happening that we would um, organize a special meeting. Well, as yeah, of right but... now, we do ha I have the Thanksgiving um party set as and the holiday party set as well. I can give you the dates if you guys want. Yes, please. That would be great. So for and the things- Also, I, we need, I'd probably be a good time 
to know how much money you're going to need too, because the committee is going to have to approve it. Yeah. So if, if I, I have mean, no, I have those numbers as well. Go ahead. Um, well, for thank for the Thanksgiving um, dinner party, it's November 16th from four to eight. Um, and I spoke with Natalie and she said in the past, the donation was 150 from the committee for that event. Uh, for the holiday party, it's Saturday, December 14th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And she also said that they donated uh, 175 in the past. So you're looking at $325. And for and um, for the Thanksgiving, um, sorry, not the Thanksgiving dinner, the holiday party, we do ask people to bring some type of um, hors d'oeuvres or something or donate some food as well. Similar to the uh, cookout. They're, they're, having the, they're having it on a Saturday, not during the week? Uh, yes, let me just double check. For the holiday party? Yeah. But, sorry, the holiday party is Tuesday, December 14th. Sorry about that. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, I wrote down the wrong thing, sorry. Is that Tuesday? Yes, Tuesday. December 14th, right? Yep. What was That's the time okay. for the holiday one? Uh, 11, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on a Tuesday? Yes. Oh, wow. Hold on one second. Yeah, that's a... Oh, man. Might have made an error here. It's 4 to 8 on uh, November 16th, and Tuesday, I'd probably be about the, about the same, I would think. The, the 14th would probably be the same date. Or same times. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going from the past. Basically, they're both about the same time or right. same length of time. Yeah, I just put down the wrong date. Oh, my goodness. So it is Tuesday. Okay. Well, I will I'll, I'll, um, double check again in the morning and I'll send out an email first thing in the morning. Okay. So, okay. Noon, just to clarify for that date. For the so, party. Um, you want to approve the uh, the three twenty five now, or do you want to wait until? I would say, you know, if he needs the money, we might as well just approve it by the committee now. I'll make a motion to give the Parks and Rec three hundred twenty five dollars for their uh, Thanksgiving dinner and their uh, Christmas party. Second. Second. Okay. Wait, sorry, help me. The Thanksgiving event is the four to eight. The December event you think is the fourteenth. You think it's usually four to eight, or is that the pancake breakfast? So they're two separate things. No, no, pancake breakfast is on a Saturday, and it's usually the it's... first Saturday of the, the first Saturday in December. Yeah. And we start cooking probably about six thirty. Door opens at eight o'clock and we cook pancakes until 12 o'clock and then we clean up. So if that goes, plan on being there for a good seven, eight hours. Is this the Santa one? Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, how yeah. far in advance would they let you know you think if, if they're going to have these things go on, like how bad COVID is and stuff like that? They, will they let you know like a month? advance or a few days i can talk with kathy bagley tomorrow just to double check to see what she thinks and um see who she needs to talk to and hopefully we can get an answer before this week is out yeah just curious those, those things can't be held outside it's too cold at that point those have to be inside so i think as obviously speaking of a mom of young children and i know other folks too like my, my kids wouldn't really be going to any pancake breakfast right. in the near future, unfortunately, unless they're vaccinated. So who knows? So we've been doing a lot of things outside in these times. So I think we should just bundle up and eat our pancakes outside, but that's just me. I'd, I'd be good with that too, like a big heated tent yeah. or something. No big deal. Okay, well, I, I got all that written down. All right. So, before you move on, are we voting on the um, 
three hundred and twenty-five bucks, or I think we just approved it, didn't we? I made a motion. Somebody seconded it. Made a motion. I seconded it, but there was no vote. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Parliamentary procedure, <laughs> live and well. Are we all right with it? Okay. No, oh, you're frozen, Paul. But as as long as you guys don't get in someone watching these minutes and saying, "Hey, hold on a second, you guys didn't do that correctly," that's not actually right. And you're fine. Okay. You dotted your eyes, cross your T's. We're good. All right. Okay, I have one more thing I want to raise, but where where where's the agenda for today before I keep talking? Grant, so public comment. Obviously, there's no one here for public comment. Okay, grants. We didn't talk about our grants. Uh, we paid two grants out of $250 each. One to <laughs> Banks and another one went to Peterson. So right now we have a balance of uh, $5,622.70. All right, say that again. We took you took two grants, or we granted yeah, two, two. We granted two grants for two hundred and fifty dollars each. Okay. And our balance right now is fifty six twenty two seventy. And sorry, I know I missed the last meeting. Those were. So who approved like who approved them? John, you're you and Natalie. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was approved. Uh, Natalie, uh, myself, um, myself as well. So, um, yeah, basically, it was done without the. I don't think anything was mentioned last meeting, was it, Jelaine? Ah, uh, yes. I think it was mentioned last meeting. Okay. All right. Okay, what um is that the normal amount of money we usually have? Seems like a lot of money, yeah. no? No, two fifty is the, the grand amount. No, sorry, the our balance. Our balance is fifty six twenty two seventy. I mean we've you know, yeah, because we had I think I gave it was like sixty two hundred or sixty one hundred dollars last month. I don't have it right here with me, but it's right. And there was some interest that we got received for a dollar thirty-three. So we're um, it's kind of crazy because I have to go check. But Natalie gets me the amount from um, uh, what's her name? Uh, who takes care of it? Um, Jillian, who 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 was Natalie's boss before? Uh -huh. Kathy Bagley, but she probably reaches no, out to Mary T. Yeah, Mary Tebow. Mary Tebow is the one that takes the money. We had 61, 21, 37 in the last, our last meeting. And that's when we approved the uh, two grants. So if you take 500 from that and at $1.33, you should come up with the figure we have today of 56, 22, 70. Any questions or comments? Okay. I just. I, I, I will say this: most of these grants come from uh, Natalie and Jolene for getting people into their programs. So that's basically where the money goes. I don't think yeah. we've paid any camp expenses outside of therapeutic rec, or I don't recall buying any equipment or anything for anyone so it's basically been people 
so they're able to go through the programs or some type of program. Natalie's more familiar with it than I am. Yeah, and if, I mean, of course, we're fully in favor of that. I think the idea, again, going back to the social media and going back to the, the other things are making sure that we are opening up to just a diverse pool of folks. I know Chris Taylor also, you know, should should be able to make those connections. A lot of the folks that she's serving would be under our umbrella as well. Um, so just want to make sure that we're getting the word out there and we're, we're choosing from a pool of people who know that we're there for this need. Yep. Agree. Um, I was just thinking for the social media, we probably are going to want to put like, you know, tell everybody who's on the committee, obviously that's public knowledge, that, you know, public record of who's on the committee. And uh, we might be asking you guys to submit a blurb or something like why you're on the committee or what your, you know, what your interest is in, in our work or so just look out for that too, if we're going to try to make it, um, you know, get, have people get to know what we're doing. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure John Carzar also has the opportunity. He, I asked for some updated data. John, do you want me just to share screen? Um, sure. Either you can or I can. If... Whatever, whatever. I can. I mean, you actually. Why don't you do it so you're in control of it, and then just do very high level. You know, don't. Uh oh, wrong screen. Hey, no, that's good. Then you just get yourself over to the. Slideshow. Oops, hold on. Let me do that again. Hmm. So, so John nicely puts up with my questions and, you know, I can't help but probe and pry. Um, so just asking kind of what's going on with our, our students with disabilities and how they've been faring with transition back to school, um, how our attendance is going for our students. Um, so this, he can tell you about this. So I'm just going to ask, do you see a screen that says uh, develop high quality inclusive practices? Yeah, but it's not yep. the slideshow. Okay. You got to go to the slideshow. What's that? You're not in slideshow. We see the slides and we see the slides on the side. Oh, yeah. Good. Go to view, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to get there present. There we go. Yeah, so, um, and what I told Catherine is that um, we're actually going to be presenting to the board uh, all our uh, state data um, for the district, uh, and we're getting ready for that right right now. So I can have current um, specific uh, around uh, Weathersfield schools, specifically with uh, special ed uh, for the next meeting. Uh, but this is something I presented to our department meeting just a little while ago in uh, our number one, uh, well, I should start off with our uh, sort of our motto is every child every day. Um, and our number one goal is to develop high quality inclusive practices. And with that, the district has uh, focused on uh, three pillars, um, empathy, equity, and achievement. And I think even more so important this year uh, that we're uh, focusing in on that. And with the uh, first goal around empathy, um, we're following uh, CASEL and uh, collaboration, uh, wow, social emotional learning. I forgot what the A stands for, but it's uh, really one of the uh, mainstream, uh, you know, uh, things around social emotional learning. And they have 10 indicators of social emotional learning. And the first one is really to have a um, explicit curriculum. And so at all our levels, uh, kindergarten to uh, grade 12, uh, we decide to go with Rethink Ed. Um, so all our students will be uh, receiving explicit instruction in social emotional learning. And this was important at all times, but I'll say, especially right now, it is so important. Um, and I'll just say one thing that we're seeing, um, uh, and especially amongst some of our youngest students, our kindergartners, um, very different than many other years, because some of these students really have been you know, isolated for the past uh, year and a half. Um, you know, play groups have stopped. Uh, Pre-K wasn't in operation like it used to be. And so we're getting some students in schools that really have had no time to socialize. And uh, we know, uh, you know, well, we're seeing uh, some behavioral uh, upticks uh, with that. 
but also we know we have to teach these skills to our children. And so uh, using uh, Rethink Ed, um, it's an online program that's used uh, kindergarten all the way to grade 12. Um, oh, and that's the uh, 10 indicators from uh, uh, Castles and Rethink Ed. And the second part, we're moving to uh, restorative practices. And a lot of times think, people think of restorative practices, well, restoring after things go wrong. Well, no, you have to make sure you have the right climate, culture going before you restore. And so it really is the overall, you know, how are people interacting with each other? And this is from adult to adult, adult to students and to students to students. Um, and we've actually uh, hired out uh, Joe Broomer. This is his uh, book uh, to work with each of our schools. And uh, this, uh, well, right before school started, we actually uh, met six days, three days with the secondary and three days with elementary teams uh, to really look at a three to five year plan. Um, and with that, this isn't a one and done. We want to make restorative practices uh, mainstream uh, across the district, all our schools, central office, um, really how we uh, manage uh, business. And it's more than just the students. It's also how we interact well, with students and with each other. Yeah, that's just thank you for highlighting the need for relationship building and, and the trauma informed component is, I mean, we've all, we're experiencing collective trauma and we all are experiencing it in different, different ways and um, different levels of, of severity. So I think uh, you know, I know in my work, a lot of my kids are really struggling too and acclimating back to school and um, that those behaviors are obviously ways that they're showing us that they're that they're having a tough time. Um, yeah. And Catherine, I'm sure you're involved with the restorative practices uh, yourself. And your day, I'll, I just called a principal last week and I said, can we do a little restorative, please, <laughs> instead of suspension? Thank you. Uh, yep. Cindy, a question for me? Or? Yeah, I, and I regret I. Um, I'm going to go to a town call, uh, town council meeting, so I have to jump off. But if you want to post that, I really would like to take a look at it. Can you do that to the committee? Yep, I can share it out to everyone. All right, sorry for the interruption. No, no problem. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, bye all. We'll hear from you. And so uh, second priority really is achievement. And I'll say this, I know we've been focusing a lot on SEL and we're not going to move away from that because it is so important. And I'll say not just because of the pandemic, it's important. Um, and you know, I say this to a lot of groups and I think I did say this to this group one time uh, about SEL. I mean, I have a lot of friends and some that have been fired from jobs. Um, but, you know, I think we all have some friends and relatives like that. Uh, with those people, they really don't get fired because of math skills or English skills. They get fired because of people skills, how they relate to each other, um, the habits that they live by. And so it's really important for our children to learn that because I, I know this, I want my children to grow up and get those jobs and maintain them. Um, but with our focus, you know, really being so strong on uh, social emotional learning, we have to make sure it's still there for achievement. And we have to make sure, um, especially now, we've all heard of learning loss. Um, I will say this, because along with learning loss, there's learning growth. Uh, this, our children right now have learned things that really people have not learned. Uh, and I'll say for you know decades, um, perseverance, they've learned uh, online how to uh, you know really negotiate all these things. And so they really learned a lot. But we do know this, there has been learning loss and especially in math and uh, language arts. And I'll show some of that, at least I got from the state level in a minute. I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'll just try to go through these really quick. Um, yeah, so right here, this shows statewide and I'll have these graphs uh, once uh, we get all the uh, data together, um, but it shows students with high needs uh, versus students without high needs. And high needs, not only are students with disability, but it's also free and reduced lunch. Um, it's also our students uh, who are uh, English language English language learners. Um, and as you can see, there is a um, decrease at the uh, state level for uh, um, you know, students with um, high needs versus um, students without high needs. And especially as you move away from um, students that were fully um, in person versus students that were hybrid. 
and especially students that were mostly remote, um, we have seen a decrease in the past couple of years uh, because of COVID. So we do know that. And one of the reasons why it's so important, it's so good to have them back in school. Um, and I will, I'm gonna use a little analogy. Um, you see that trike there? Um, and I'd love to say I came up with this story, uh, but Liz Friedis, our um, supervisor, uh, came up with it. And it was basically this, um, you know, we have a rusted old bike. You know, we've been away from the classroom for a while with everyone. It doesn't mean our old bike doesn't work. We have to get on it and we have to move along and we have to make sure we know the focus points of where we want to grow. And so we're going to get on that bike. We're back in live. Some things might be a little bit harder, but we're going to keep moving it. Um, just some areas that we're focusing on, effective feedback, um, and then just uh, high quality inclusive practices. Um, really that collaboration, especially with general ed, special ed, um, our paraprofessionals, uh, which just did new contract with them, so they are now paraeducators and behavior specialists that we really have to work together. Um, we do have a new agency, uh, Effective Schools uh, Systems, um, basically from some of the ESSER funds because of COVID that came in, uh, we decided we didn't want to hire a bunch of people and uh, honestly lay them off after two years. And so we're hiring out effective school systems to uh, build our internal capacity to be better. And especially around the areas of uh, trauma, trauma focused uh, practices. Um, so we have uh, clinicians at uh, each of our elementary schools. We've actually increased one of our social workers uh, to split time at the high school and middle school, um, and really to help some of our students that are having the most difficulties. And I will say this, I mean, it's uh, what is happening out there is outrageous with uh, the amount of um, uh, depression, um, hospitalization, suicidal behavior. Um, our hospitals are uh, really overwhelmed right now. And I'm hearing stories of people waiting in emergency rooms um, to look for a um, psychiatric hospitalization. They're waiting there for weeks at a time because there are no beds. And so we're really trying to make sure that they get the help in the schools and that we have an increase um, of assistance in the schools. John, can I ask a question? Yes. I'm sorry. I've been talking about effective school solutions three different times today. Yep. So are they all mental health people? Yes. Social so, workers, uh, who else? Like what are their- Social workers, marriage and family therapists, um, psychologists. Um, so we have different people in different schools, um, but they're clinicians and really looking at mental health in schools. Um, they started off in Jersey, yeah. um, but quickly moved their way. And uh, a lot of the towns, Newington uses them, Berlin uses Middletown, them. Middletown, Bridgeport, yep. Meriden, yeah. like a whole bunch of places. And it's, yeah, interesting. I, I, I will say this in being um, a psychologist myself, um, it's bringing in, that's why I like they're increasing our internal capacity because yeah. um, more with that clinical model and it's, you know, we got great psychologists and social workers in town, but I know from working at the hospital setting with grand rounds, and that's really what we're looking at with the uh, trauma-informed practices, mm -hmm. almost that grand rounds talking about how to improve our clinical skills. And we do some uh, internal um, peer supervision, but they really bring it at a different level. Um, so that yeah. I'm really excited about their involvement already. And they are gonna be starting working with uh, three of our schools um, who have specialized trauma-informed programs, Hamner School right here, Silas Dean Middle School and uh, Wethersfield High School um, doing uh, the um, champion model through trauma-informed uh, practices and actually finding a group of uh, five teachers at each of those schools to go through the training and then to uh, be observed and get some supervision on a monthly basis to improve their practice. And then they could become leaders in the schools to help others improve their trauma-informed practices. Sorry, this is the real last question. Yeah, please. With this, with the, well, you just happen to be the right place at the right time. With the staff, I mean, there's incredible staffing shortages in all different areas, right? Even worse than normal. Where do they find these people to work for effective school solutions versus working for the school system? So um, they did uh, postings um, and I actually, I saw some on Indeed. Um, maybe the difference, they, they don't specifically have school certification. Okay. So it opens it up a little bit wider. Um, okay. uh, we did say that. And I, uh, when we first hired them, I said, you know, I don't want new people off the block and 
sorry, no, no insult to somebody new, but they said that they would find people that have uh, three um, years of experience or more. Um, so some of them do have um, their own practices. Um, I know our person at um, Hamner has her own practice, and I think you know things have changed with that, and just wanting to get involved in schools more. I think that's yeah, the cer the certification might be the ticket there. Yep. Thank you. That's just my own curiosity. Yeah. And then um, this came out uh, from the um, uh, state of Connecticut, and just you know, sort of a framework of how we're going to assess students and then find a way to help them recover any loss. Um, and so assessment comes, and I'm trying to think what I put in here. Yeah, I'll go back because I didn't put it to different ways of assessing, but, uh, you know, whoops, it's behind. Um, so in this uh, document from the state, it does talk about different ways of assessing students. And we know this, we haven't come up with more time. And so, and not that we wanna do more, you know, more in the same amount of time. We just have to get better with what we do. We really have to focus in on the most important areas, make sure uh, we have true assessments of uh, where students are. And we call it their present level of performance, where they are with reading, where they are with math, where they are socially and emotionally, where they are behaviorally, where they are with speech and language. And then with that, focusing on areas and the, um, you know, and I'll say like the the power standards, and I know that's been used a lot for the past 20 years, uh, but really focusing more on the power standards to get through and make growth. Um, and most important is using the data. Um, and so, uh, you know, this sort of talks about the uh, process a little bit, but uh, making sure we use data to show where students are right now. Um, and that not only includes, uh, you know, the uh, math and uh, language arts data, but includes our attendance data because, uh, over the uh, course of uh, COVID, we, and I'll say, we have been missing some of our students. Their attendance was not as strong as we wanted it to be. And so now that we have them in school, uh, we are doing more home visits. We are doing uh, you know, a lot more to get them back to school because they're still struggling that, with that. Um, and this just, um, I, I should point out with this, this is all the, uh, different specialized programs that we have because of really developing high quality inclusive practices. We know this, students do better with us in their home schools, with their teachers. Um, and there is a, a white paper out there called uh, Specialized, uh, oh, sorry, Alternative Schools and Programs to Jail Pipeline. When you send them out, it's hard for them to come back. And sometimes students do need that you know, really level of um, structure and support that we may not be able to provide in our schools. But the more we can provide them for that here, the more we can have them in their inclusive classroom because we can go with preferred activities, preferred teachers. Um, you know, maybe they struggle in math and so we'll pull them into the program for math, but they love reading. And so they can go to the uh, general classroom to be with their non-disabled peers. Uh, this year, we actually expanded our uh, STRIVE program. It was a trauma-informed program. It used to be K-3. And so we uh, expanded it. We uh, hired another teacher. So we have two classrooms. And so this is now a time we can say in Weathersfield, we have trauma-informed programs from K all the way through um, age of 22. And so people with uh, you know, social-emotional issues um, can have more of a self-contained program around that. Um, and we've increased our, uh, our other programs, our uh, ABA program. When I started, I think we had a pre-K K program with four students in it. And now we're looking at our LEAP ABA program with 30 students. And so really keeping them in district to um, you know, give them the best education. And then equity, we've been doing a lot um, in the district, uh, but to make sure that uh, you know, every child means every child. And that's regardless of race, that's regardless of where you live um, and how to really integrate um, together. Uh, so every child feels accepted. Um, with this, uh, uh, the town's been doing a lot of work too with their uh, coalition. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll say the high school I know has been doing a lot of work, Emerson School, uh, but we're, really, we're looking across the district and making sure that, um, you know, we really provide equity to all. Some data. 
And that's, that's it. So I got to figure out how to escape. Thank you, John. Thank, thanks everybody for staying a little bit later, but I really, um, really valued your presentation and telling us kind of where things are at. Um, oh, if you go to stop share. <laughs> I lost that. Down should be red at the bottom. Just go from green to red to green. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, That's okay. We're, no, we're I, I somehow I have a screen of us on there, and I have this other screen. Um, hit just you okay. can hit the escape button. That might do something for you. I do have. That's okay. It, not, no. We're going to take, we're going to end on this powerful quote to just send us into the night. Right? <laughs> Paul, do we have anything else we need to do here? I think you're all set um, so far. Uh, this, yeah, we're all set so far. Okay, well, please keep this committee in mind, John, for my annoying questions and also for what we can do to help support students and continue to, you know, share what you guys are doing see if there's any other kind of opportunities that we can open up to the town um, in general to, you know, to support our students with disabilities. Yeah, I, I will say this, um, anyone who you know who wants to either be hired as a para substitute teacher or bus driver, uh, it, it's, it's hurting yeah. out there. I mean, there's looking for people to fill our classrooms are tough right now. Yep. <sighs> That's, I hear that. Every, every yeah. district I talk to, I know. <laughs> Not great. Um, hopefully we continue on the upswing. There's nowhere to go but up, really. So, okay, well, thank you everybody for your, again, extra time and attention. I'm gonna send those minutes out um, now. And actually, no, I'm gonna wait for Adam to send me the link, then I'm gonna send the minutes out. Um, and, Keep an eye out for more info about the events, um, assignments for the pages of the resource booklet, and any questions we might have in terms of um, getting our social media together. Anything else, Paul? No, so, so far sounds good. Um, I guess if you wanna make a motion to adjourn, we could do that. And make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Do we do that? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Have a good night.